Hey guys, this is the chapter reading for Confessions of a Sophomore Prankster by Danielle Jacks. Chapter 1. Setter. Sunday night. Running away from campus security is funny as fuck. Better than any gym workout. The adrenaline coursing through my veins is giving me a buzz, and I can never resist the next big high. As the football team's wide receiver, I know I'm fast, and some middle-aged guy isn't going to be able to keep up with my stamina. I take a left turn, looping back around to the college library. I can hear my fraternity brothers in the foreground with a golf cart, heading away from my direction. I make sure the guard has seen me before circling the block once more. I want to make sure everyone gets away, especially since this prank was solely my idea. The library is the one building nobody would expect to find me inside, which makes it the best place for me to hide while the trail goes cold. I'm Brandon Setter, and I'm not a Preston Union... I'm not at Preston University to study. I came from San Francisco to Los Angeles for the parties, the good times, and most importantly, the football. I've lost sight of my fraternity brothers, but the security guard who's chasing me can't be far behind. I search my, park, my pocket locating my access card. After checking the coast is clear, I push my baseball cap back to cover my light brown hair, but not my face, and I walk inside the revolving door. Luckily for me, this is the one place on campus that's open around the clock. My sneakers squeak across the marble floor as I rush inside, and the woman behind the desk gives me the evil eye. I scan my library card, wink at her, and then disappear into the stacks. At the end of, of sophomore year, I need to declare my major. But it's only June, so I have plenty of time. None of these books appeal to me, and my future won't include having my head buried in educational resources. I belong with my father working in the family business whether I like it or not. Sports are my life, but I never wanted to be the one selling the equipment rather than playing the games. Setters Athletics is a well-known brand of sports supplies. We sponsor events and work with charities. I'm privileged to be a part of such a success, but I'd like something I've earned on my own. Sharp-toned voices at the front of the library stop me in my tracks. I edge out from the far end of the bookcase to see one of the security guards talking to the desk he must have seen the door moving and decided to check it out. The treacherous librarian behind the counter points in my direction. I press my back against the wooden bookcase and close my eyes. I don't get caught out. It's not in my nature to explain myself. Coming to the library was a mistake, but I have to make a decision. It's unfamiliar ground, so I don't know the best places to lay low or any hidden corridors I could slip down. The prank I set up for tomorrow's lecture better be worth the risks I've taken tonight. I calm my nerves, only noticing the girl studying at, the, at a nearby table when I, came, when I come to my senses. She looks vaguely familiar, but I can't place her. She's a petite blonde with a full cupid's bow. Footsteps moving towards my position make me spring to life. Unzipping my black coat, I casually sit down next to her and slip my baseball cap into my pocket. What the hell are you doing, Brandon? She asks, but she doesn't look up from the page. I try to suppress my surprise. She knows who I am. We're not well acquainted, and she wouldn't call me, or she wouldn't call me by my first name. Everyone calls me Sutter, and I'll be out of your way in a few minutes if you work with me. I say, tilting my head from side to side to loosen up. It's game time if I don't want to get caught. She scratches her cheek, looking at me at last. Her blue eyes are cold like ice, and she doesn't seem affected by my charms. I bet you don't even know my name, or who I am. She says, sounding annoyed. I lean in close. Are you upset because I didn't call you, you call after we slept together? I flash a lightning bolt smile. You wish, asshole. She bites out. I bark a laugh just as the guy I'm avoiding appears from between the stacks. How long have you two, you two been in here? He asks in between gasps of breath. Maybe I should have kept running home. This guy would have never caught up to me. But it's too late now. A couple hours. I have an essay to finish, the girl says, tapping her book with her pencil. Who makes notes before writing an assignment? This chick must be dedicated. It's probably why she's alone on a Sunday night with a book instead of getting some sweet pillow talk from an overenthusiastic nerd. What about you, he says, turning his attention away from the bookworm. Me? I ask with an easy smile. My fate rests in the hands of this girl, who I'm fairly certain hates everything I stand for. If she knows who I am and doesn't treat me like like football football royalty, she can't be a fan. I pull a textbook towards my chest. I'm wherever she is, 
I try to sound innocent. He rubs his sweat-beaded be brow. Did you see anyone acting suspiciously? Only him, she says, waving her pencil. I give an unfriendly laugh. What a goofball you are. I kiss her cheek, slinging my arm around her. She gives me a dirty look, but she doesn't push me away. I don't have time for whatever romance games you two are playing. Is this guy your boyfriend? Is he with you or not? Her jaw tightens as she grits her teeth. Her response is slow, but I can see my triumph in her eyes. She's not going to throw me under the bus. We're sorry for wasting your time. He's with me, Carl, she says, reading his name badge. Her smile's weak, but I could kiss her again for her performance. Okay, have a good night, I say, and he leaves, shaking his head. The girl pushes my, off, my arm off her shoulders. Once the security guard has completely gone, I relax back into the, care, into the chair. Thanks, luscious lips. It's Casey, you obnoxious jock. See, I knew she wasn't a fan. Well, Casey, you just saved me $200 and a headache. I tap my wallet through my sweatpants pocket. Who says he would have taken a bribe? Everyone has a price. My eyes drop to her pretty lips. She sighs heavily, averting my gaze. Are we done here? I have to say I'm a little insulted by your coldness, Stacy. I get to my feet, scraping the chair against the floor. It's Casey, and you'll get over it. She flicks her wrist, dismissing me. I'm amused, but also strangely turned on. Nobody treats me like this, and it makes me want to get under her skin. I'd love to see that anger taken out in another way. She just needs a little time to warm up to the idea. Thanks for the help. I'll see you around, I say, although I'm not finished. I will get the last laugh. I'm not the kind of guy you dismiss like yesterday's news. I start to walk away before adding, and next time, maybe I'll call. I smirk believe before leaving her open-mouthed. There's no way we've slept together. I'd remember her feistiness, but I'm not used to someone being so hostile. I'm the one kicking the girl out when we're done, not the other way around. It's deadly quiet when I leave the library. The street lights are shining bright, and it's too early for the bird song. I make my way across campus to Alpha Sigma Bit Alpha Sigma Zeta, ready to put this adventure to bed. There's a loud cheer when I enter the house. What the fuck happened to you? Jacob shouts, making me laugh, while Easton shakes his head. He usually takes a while to come around to my pranks. I was creating a diversion so all you clowns could make it home unscathed. Truth be told, I'm not sure what happened tonight. My response is usually to run. I'm a runner, that's what I do, but my detour to the library was worth it to mess with the cute girl. I'm looking forward to winning her over and getting her full lips around my cock. I take off my sneakers, abandoning them in the doorway, and grab a bottle of beer from the fridge. Tonight was a victory, and I intend to celebrate with my frat brothers. Are we all set for tomorrow? Jacob asks. I raise my drink. Of course we are. Let the good times begin. Everyone lifts their bottles and takes a drink. My younger brother's coming for a campus tour first thing in the morning, and with the help of my extended family, it's going to be a blast. Christian isn't the party animal I am. But that's all going to change when he gets here. I'm going to show him there's more to life than committing to his high school girlfriend. Some of the fraternity guys have settled down in the last year, but that won't be me. I'm going to have the full college experience, including the easy women, hard liquor, and loose morals. We drink until dawn when I stumble up the stairs. I brush my teeth and accidentally bang my head on the bathroom cabinet, but hardly notice. My room's spinning when I finally flop onto the bed. I pass out, fully clothed, on top of the bed covers. Chapter 2. Setter. Monday. I'm 20 minutes late to meet Christian. I pull on a plain blue t-shirt and slide into my black jeans. My sneakers are where I left them by the front door. I stride down the stairs and quickly put them on. With a protein bar in my mouth, I race out of the fraternity house. The quickest way across campus is to run which will also mean I haven't completely missed my morning workout. It's after nine, so a lot of students are already in class, making it easy to sprint through the empty space. I find Christian propped up against the science building right where I expected him to be. Morning, baby brother. We need to get a move on or we're gonna be late. The lecture hall doors closed almost 30 minutes ago, he says, tapping his, his watch. Mr. Herbert is as boring as dried cornflakes. I'm not interested in the science he has to teach. We're not even doing any experiments. It's just slideshows that can be self-taught from a textbook. I'm never going to use any of those skills after college, so it's a waste of time. 
and not worth getting out of bed for. It's a special presentation. It's a special presentation I don't want to miss. I want you to get the full experience of what Preston University is about, not just the dull stuff they'll bore you with this afternoon. Come on, Jacob will let us in the side door. I sent a message to Jacob to let him know when we'll arrive. He pushes the door open right on cue. I lead Christian into the lecture hall, ignoring the glares from my classmates. Everyone is used to my tardiness by now, so I don't know why they bother to look at me. Jacob saved us a seat in the middle row, and I pat him on the back before dropping into my seat. Nice of you to join us, Mr. Setter. Who is this? If he's a younger sibling, I hope he has brains. I hope he has your brains, but not your lack of enthusiasm. Mr. Herbert says, talking more to himself than questioning my whereabouts. He's probably shown off to the campus visitors as he usually ignores me. I wave him off, but bite back my snarky comment. It's obvious this class doesn't rank high on my priorities, but there's no need to share my opinion. So as I was saying, at the end of today's session, you'll be allocated a lab partner for your final module for this term. It'll count towards a third of your grade, so it'll be worth putting some time into. The details will be outlined on the handouts. I take out my notepad and doodle a picture of a mad scientist. I nudge Christian, drawing his attention away from the board to look at it. He shakes his head. He rests his arm on the table like he's engrossed in Mr. Herbert's words. I stopped listening 20 minutes ago. You have four weeks to prove or disprove your hypothesis. Anyone want to share their theory? Mr. Herbert asks. I glance at the board, which shows a Bunsen burner and a marshmallow on a rod. Black fungus might look cool, but it's bad for you kids, I say once the room quiet quiet quietens earning me a few snickers can anyone name another source of black knot fungus woodland sticks christian says we look at each other i was trying to be a smart ass whereas he seems eager to impress this is typical of my brother but i try to hide my distaste his visit to preston university may be short but i intend to make it memorable christian needs to lighten up and i'm going to show him the benefits of letting loose Gross, someone at the front of the room says. It's only disgusting if you're eating it, I reply. I forgot you jocks only eat tuna and eggs. You wouldn't you wouldn't taint your holy temple with a dose of sugar. Are you stereotyping me, Blondie? I raise my eyebrow, wondering if she'll dare to take me on. She has my attention, but she can hold it for more but can she hold it for more than a few words? We'll have to wait and see. She turns around to face me and it's the first chance I get to see those luscious lips again. She's the feisty girl from the library. I knew I'd seen her before. She doesn't get a chance to reply to my comment because my PowerPoint starts to play across the screen. Last night I managed to hack into the college network and my video will be playing across the whole campus. It starts with a message, come to Preston University where the fun times keep on rolling. Images of parties flash on and off the screen. They are a few shots of the naked mile followed by initiation into our fraternity. All faces are blurred out, but there are a few revealing pictures. Some of the classes cheer when the short clip of a loose goat makes a mockery of campus security. That was probably my favorite part. I laugh loudly. Okay, enough, Mr. Herbert says as the video ends. Come and get your worksheets and get out of here before I decide to look into who made the unofficial welcome video. He looks at me, although I know he can't prove anything. I stand and leave through the side door. Christian gets up, but he doesn't follow my lead. Don't you want to find out who your lab partner is? You were just saying how much you wanted to get more hands-on, he says. There are other things I like to get my hands-on, if you know what I mean. I wink at him and he rolls his eyes. Should I collect it for you? He points to the line forming in the stairwell. I shake my head. The real fun starts tonight, after the lectures have ended. Are you coming to football practice? I ask, ignoring his hesitation as I walk toward the exit. I won't be trying out for any sports teams, so there's no point in me hanging around the coaching session. I think I might check out one of the other activities. I'm disappointed he's not interested in watching me train, but I get it. He won't be playing football. Sports and Christian don't belong in the same sentence. But I hoped he'd come for me. Don't worry. I have you covered for all the experiences you need. I know you're only trying to help, but I'd like to do some of the official tours too. The wedge between us widens. The things the college wants to show potential students are standard. They don't give you a sense of why you should come why you should choose to live at Preston University. Okay, whatever you want, I say, trying to sound breezy about his decision. He grabs my arm and I turn to face him. Please get the worksheet. I'd like to have a look at it. Today, I want to see what the college has to offer. And tonight, I'll let you show me your side of what happens around here. I pat him on the back. Okay, little brother, we'll do it your way. 
I go and retrieve my worksheet, handing it to Christian before we eventually make it out of the lecture hall. Once outside, he studies the experiment while he walks to my next class. Who's Casey Nelson? Christian asks. How should I know? A wicked smile crosses my face, wondering where he learned that name. She's your new lab partner. I can't name even a third of the people in my class, but a guy can hope there's only one Casey. My suspicions are confirmed when she says, you have to be kidding me. My smile widens as our eyes meet. A mixture of anger and something else crosses her face as her cheeks redden. Maybe science just became my new favorite subject. The challenge of Casey Nelson just became a game I can't resist playing. Thank you.